Hi, this is Celeste, and this is the Celestial Report for July 14, 2020. And yes, on the heels of The Beast is Here, we have confirmation on what was just shared yesterday. But before I get into that, I am getting droves of emails from many of you who either yourself or someone that you know has been tested and of course, we don't have the vaccine yet, but that's coming quickly or censored. And you're wondering about your the spiritual ramifications of that. All I can tell you at this point is I would repent right now. Ask the Lord to forgive you for doing that, which means don't be doing it again um, because we're precariously close to the time where it is the mark and there are two sins that are the unpardonable sins one of those is blaspheming the holy spirit and the other one is the mark there is no forgiveness for either one of those so once you hit that mark um and i say that we are just almost right there um this is you're playing with fire if you test vaccinate or get this hydrogel quantum dot um, sensor. The next thing that I would do is claim the blood of the lamb. That's how we overcome in these days. Because when you apply the blood, it is as if your sin was no more, except in the <clears throat> except for blasphemy and taking the mark. And also I would confess your testimony of what Jesus has done in your life to him uh, so that he knows that you do not have two masters because the Bible says you can't have two masters. You can only have one master. And quite frankly, by the mere fact, I don't care what the reason is. I don't care if it's your job, medical, whatever um, the situation is. You you are giving what is holy and that God bestowed upon you and your unique set of keys to Satan and his devices to form weapons against you. And that's what we're going into today. So um, I guess it's uh, buyer beware. Um, if you're going to mess with testing and vaccines and the sensor, you're going to get burned in the eternal fires of hell. Um, not maybe today, but this is bioaccumulative. And quite frankly, we do not know where that fine line is between it building up in your body because it assembles inside of your body. It starts to grow inside your body. And there is this fine line between you as a human and you becoming a synthetic, a, a biological synthetic um, entity um, that is not recognizable by Jesus Christ and you would not be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I am not sure we're going to get like a red light on that one. Um, Jesus says we don't know the day or the hour, but we can know the season. And by the very articles that I am presenting to you, you know that you are in the season. So take this seriously. Share it with the people that you know, your family, your loved ones, your acquaintances. Let it go far and wide because quite frankly, the Bible also says my people perish for lack of knowledge. If you don't do your due diligence, you're not going to get excused. This is written in the word of God. It is permanent and it is eternal. So with that cheery note, news, let us find out, uh, taking it a little bit deeper into what we learned yesterday with the beast is here. So we are looking at um, something that I got just this morning from the Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology News, and they all always have very interesting articles, and this is called this article red blood cells harnessed harnessed like a horse that means it's a your red blood cells have been harnessed by 
evil entities as nanoparticle carriers for vaccines. So see, you have submitted your blood to quantum com computer and Satan, and he has harnessed it and he is going to take your red blood cells and use it as a weapon against you to kill you uh, both in this life and the next life so let's go on um, these are pictures of nanoparticles on blood cells and this is by weiss institute at harvard university and i'm just going to go through this article because I don't have time to write another article. Stuff is coming in way too fast, but you need to know. So there is an engineering program at Harvard, um, and it's called uh, Engineering and Applied Sciences, or the acronym SEAS, uh, S-E-A-S, and it is harnessing the innate immune function of red blood cells to build a platform technology, platform just like the World Economic Forum uses platform, that uses your erythrocytes to deliver antigens to immune system antigen presenting cells in the spleen. Basically, that means they are going to use your erythrocytes to... Um, through nanoparticles that are on your blood, which we're going to find out how intense that is in just a few moments. And, <clears throat> and it's going to go in your spleen, and then we're going to find out what happens then. So they have done initial um, experiments, and this is called erythrocyte-driven immune targeting or editing. They're gene editing you. They are changing your DNA and your blood. And they said it's for cancer. And they did it just in mice. But I would propose to you that really we saw this happening with um, the pathogen. So the team suggests that nanoparticle carrying red blood cells could be used as a biocompatible adjuvant for a variety of vaccines. So, you know, Let's just have the millions of vaccines that the UN wants us to have. So they say that the spleen is one of the best organs in the body to target when generating an immune response because it is one of the few organs where red and white blood cells naturally interact. Um, red blood cells in eight ability to transfer attached pathogens to immune cells has only recently been discovered. And this study unlocks the door to an exciting array of future developments in the field of using human cells for disease treatment and prevention. Now remember, array in the Bible, the first and the last usage, the first usage of array is in Genesis, the last is in Revelation was talking about the array of God. And I, I am perfectly comfortable with a, a God's array. But in the middle of the rest of the Bible, whenever array is, is used, it is used in the context of a battle, of a war, the war between good and evil, between God and Satan. So this is there was a paper that was entitled Erythrocyte Driven Immunization via Biomimicry of the Natural Antigen Presenting Function. Basically, they're going to counterfeit uh, some blood cells and they're going to use, or maybe they're going to hijack your blood cells with these nanoparticles. Now, this is where it, get, it really gets kind of interesting. So red blood cells account for more than 80% of the cells in, the human, in our human body, and their primary role is to shuttle oxygen to the lungs of our organs, the authors wrote. Now think about all the people that got uh, pneumonia with the COVID. Hmm. It was our lungs and or those people's lungs that were impacted, but it wasn't really pneumonia. I propose that it was these nanoparticles. Anyway, going back to the article, so the erythrocytes are an active member of the, our innate immune system, and we do have several different immune systems. 
Um, and they, they fight different things, um, kill infections of different kinds. So the erythrocytes naturally capture certain bacterial pathogens in the circulation, kill them off through oxidative stress, and present them to the APCs in the spleen. Um, and then this offers a genuine opportunity to develop a synthetic, it's biomimic, but uh, a synthetic strategy to target the spleen and the erythrocyte-driven immune targeting, which leverages anti antigen presentation of anything they want into your body, into the spleen and into your immune system. So, you know, whether you consent to a vaccine or not is irrelevant because these things are um, aerosolized right now. So for, then it goes on. In fact, using blood re red blood cells as delivery vehicles, using your red blood cells as delivery vehicles, that happens, folks, because you have nanoparticles and you have submitted your blood to the bee system to develop a weapon against you and yes there are is no we weapon formed against you that will prosper but it sure can make your life darn miserable and at some point it could cost you your eternal destiny so they say that this type of um, delivery vehicle for drugs is not a new idea and the majority of the existing technology one targets the young lungs because of the dense network of capillaries causes the cargoes to shear off of the red blood cells as they squeeze through the tiny vessels. This makes it challenging to deliver the cargo to the spleen because the lungs act as a big filter, basically. Reducing lung uptake is essential into enabling nanoparticle carrying erythrocytes to escape the lungs and deliver their cargo or their payload, as we talked about yesterday, to the other organs, and in this case, your spleen. So there you see what, just what we were talking about yesterday. So to make the strategy work, the research team first needed to figure out how to get the antigens to stick to the red blood step cells strongly enough to resist the shearing off process in the lungs so that it could reach the spleen. And so they call they coded polystyrene. I mean, that's like plastic nanoparticles with oval puminin, which I mean, I can if I mispronounced it, I'm sorry, a protein known to cause a mild immune response, then incubated them with oh, mouse red blood cells. And remember, those are the humanized mice. And they found that a ratio of 300 nanoparticles per blood cell. So there you go. Um, our blood cells, their target is for us to have 300 nanoparticles for every cell in our body. Whoa, that's a lot. Uh, resulted in a greater number of nanoparticles bound to the cells. I guess it's kind of like that old saying, um, what is it? Uh, birds flock together, stay together. Um, you know, the swarm the swarming thing, safety and numbers, so that there is a retention of about 80% of the nanoparticles when the cells were expo exposed to the sheer stress found in the lung capillaries and a moderate expression of lipid uh, mo molecule called PS on the cell's membrane. So a high level of PS on the red blood cells is essential, essentially an eat me signal. Really, cannibalism. They're going to turn your cells into cannibalize um, that causes them to be digested in your spleen when they are stressed and damaged. And they wanted to avoid that. Anyway, they hope that a lower amount of PS would instead temporarily signal, check me out. 
And that doesn't sound really good either, which would then take up the red blood cells, antigen-coated nanoparticles without the cells th themselves getting destroyed. To test the hypothesis, the team injected red blood cells coated with their nanoparticles into mice where they tracked and accumulated in their bodies. 20 minutes after injection, more than 99% of the nanoparticles have been cleared from the animal's blood and more nanoparticles were present in the spleen than the lung. Uh, the higher nanoparticle accumulation in the spleen persisted for 24 hours and the number of edit red, red blood cells in the circulation remained unchanged, showing and or demonstrating that the red blood cells had successfully delivered their cargos or payloads to the spleen without being um, destroyed. Having confirmed that these nanoparticles could be successfully delivered in the spleen in vivo, the researchers next evaluated whether the antigens on the nanoparticle surfaces induced an immune response. And so the mice were injected with edit once a week for three weeks. Now remember, um, for those of you that are contemplating or being forced or told that you have to get testing, um, they want to test you once a month. Now, it's interesting these mice were injected with the edit once a week for three weeks. So is that the magic number of when um, your soul might be in, in peril? I say it's in peril if you go f with any of the testing vaccination or sensor. But anyway, they're, they're trying, they're testing the fence, so to speak. So treated mice displayed an eightfold and 2.2 fold more T cells displaying the delivered antigen, you know, that's the artificial one, the, the payload, um, that were given free nanoparticles or were untreated respectively. Mice treated with edit also produced more antibodies against whatever in their blood than the other groups of mice. To see if these edit-induced immune responses could potentially prevent or treat disease, the team repeated three-week prophylactic injection of edit into mice. Once again, we see this repeated thing, uh, this repeated treatment. So this could happen with the testing. This can happen with the vaccine. It's not going to be one vaccine. It's going to be many vaccines. And then inoculated them with lymphoma cells that express the, this protein on their surfaces. The, mus, the mice that received the edit had about a three-fold slower tumor growth compared with the control group um, and the group that received free nanoparticles and had lower numbers of viable cancerous cells. Of course, they're going to make it sound really good, but see, the opposite can be true too. Um, those nanoparticles can have a payload of a poison, um, a toxin, a chemical, like ricin, anything, um, a spirit, a demon, anything. So, of course, they're saying that this is increasing the window for therapeutic interventions. Now, remember, we just learned this week that legal Inter interventions such as sticking you with a sharp object is a form of um, execution. So, um, and it's an approved and legal, just like the Nazis killed all the, the people that they did, and it was completely legal. This, they are talking here about therapeutic legal interventions for execution. You just have to be able to read their code. Edit is essentially an adjuvant-free vaccine uh, because the adjuvants that we we traditionally knew in the, in the times past were chemicals that were added to like a like let's say a pneumonia vaccine, supposedly to, to make it the shelf life longer. Well, now it can be, they can say it's adjuvant free because the adjuvant is actually inside of the nanoparticles. 
So it's, it's really, um, they're playing games with you with words. Red blood cells have been safely transfused into patients for centuries, and the ability to enhance immune responses could make them a safe alternative to foreign adjuvants, increasing the efficacy of vaccines and the speed of vaccine creation. So basically, you know, the, they're trying to expedite this whole thing. So in summary, we have developed a biomimetic strategy that exploits, exploits. I mean, that is like a military term. We are going to do mighty exploits of the innate immune function of erythrocytes and engineer. This is not God doing it. This is wickedness, evil, engineering, efficient nanoparticle particle handoff that's like when your computer does the handshake and sometimes you can't get through once it does the handshake I just had that happen to me yesterday and you may find that your health you are locked out of health because of these nanoparticles that um, you either knowingly or unknowingly have gotten in and permeated your body so they do want to have further research and do some more specific immune, immunological studies, but that this platform can be used as a versatile strategy to target several off-the-shelf nanoparticles to the spleen without specific modifications. Oh, that just makes me feel so happy inside. Um, I don't want them messing with my immune system. Thank you very much. And I'm not going to help them out because I'm not going to take testing. I refuse vaccination. And I also refuse their uh, sensor, their hydrogel quantum dot sensor. So this is what they say. And they're wrapping it up here. The human body is a treasure trove of elegant solutions to healthcare problems. Read my lips depopulation and well medicine has come a long way in understanding those mechanisms we are still in the early stages of being able to harness them remember like a horse and it has a master and the master is not god um, it is satan or using fallen angel technology to help them improve the length and quality of human life. Of course, you're going to live eternally, but if you take the mark, it will be eternally in the fires of hell. Anyway, uh, this is according to Donald Ingber, MD, PhD, who knows nothing about uh, the spiritual ramifications, but he is a professor of vascular biology, so we should, of course, trust him in all of our healthcare needs. This research is an exciting step forward to the goal, and we could dramatically change how the immune responses are modulated in patients. Well, I'll trust the Lord, Jesus, to modulate my immune system. Thank you very much. So the authors further wrote, adjuvant-free therapies based on self cells, self cells, really, of the body represent a unique way of propelling the development of vaccines. You know what? Pride, self, has always been something that, as a Christian, um, we are to crucify self. We are supposed to um, get rid of self, pour it out. Um, we are to have nothing to... I mean, we are uniquely created, and we for that we can be very thankful. Uh, but a life of self is very selfish, basically, and not a contribution to the body of Christ. So future studies can focus on understanding the similarities and differences between edit and other adjuvants, availability, and additional adjuvants, especially the self-based adju adjuvants, like the perturbed, uh, perturbed erythrocytes. Ooh, um, may uh, significantly benefit the scientific community engaged in adjuvant and vaccine um, research. So there you have it, folks. Um, this was uh, quite a nugget. 
Um, I know you probably will have questions. So um, if you become a patron, you are free to answer questions. Um, and I will answer as best I can with the time given me. So I would take this to the Lord in prayer. But once again, um, refuse testing, refuse vaccinations, refuse the sensor, the hydrogel quantum dot, although it will be presented in either the vaccination or, as I just discovered last week, the um, testing. So there's not going to be any excuses. Um, you know, the Lord's not, you know, if, if it turns out that it is the mark, um, the Lord's not going to pardon you um, because you had to get it for your job or whatever the reason, or you had to have surgery or whatever. It is time, body of Christ, that we stand up, we know the season, and we say no to this type of technology. I have explained to you the grave dangers that we are facing. See you next time on The Celestial Report. <music>